All right, hockey fans, let's get you set for this second game here on day number two. It's the 2018 Canadian National Blind Hockey Tournament. As we get you set for this contest between Team Gold and Team Yellow, who are donning the red jerseys down to our right. Well, this is a special game here for a number of reasons. Maybe one of the bigger ones. Two Toronto Ice Owls going head to head here between the posts as Joey Cabral gets set to take on his mentor, Mario Ross. And then selfishly, this is my 500th career broadcast. Oh wow, congrats. So, thank you, a very special game here. It should be a great game as both of these teams had a pretty interesting opening day. Team Gold scoring a 4-2 win yesterday over Team Red. And Team Yellow ended up dropping their opening game 3-2 in overtime, but it was one heck of an opening game for Team Yellow. And I expect them to bounce back here with a big effort against Team Gold. Now, are they wearing Team the same wearing the numbers? Reds. Yes, same numbers. Same numbers are yep. okay, because yes, the, uh, the previous game, we... Uh, we had alternate to jerseys and numbers, so, yes. all right, perfect. The, the only player wearing a different number is Joey Cabral, the goaltender, number right. 30 instead of number one. Gotcha. But all the other numbers are the same, and a couple players to keep tabs on in this game. Well, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention Kelly Serbu, because, man, has he ever oh, yeah. been on fire the past couple of tournaments. And then on the flip side, how about the performance of Jason Yuha yesterday? Man, did he ever have a breakout day. Fabulous skater, good hands, and uh, I know in some of the conversations that were had yesterday and earlier today on uh, the broadcast here on AMI Audio, you got to think he's one of the guys that's going to get tapped on Sunday you would for think. the national team. Yep. The way he skates, the way he controls the puck, yeah, it would be a bit of a shock if he weren't on that Team Canada roster. Certainly some potential Canadian national players in this game. And, well, the two that we've already mentioned get set to take the opening face-off. It's Serbu and Yuha at center ice. And we're underway here between Team Gold and Team Yellow. Team Gold skating left to right across your monitors. They are wearing the gold jerseys. Team Yellow donning the red sweaters here as Yuha with some good work already off the hop 14 gold. Centers in front and that one was intended for Willette, but it's broken up. And it's skated out by Kelly Serbu. Serbu backhands it in. He gets taken down going across the line. No call, play continues on as Wyatt Harvey picks it up for team gold. Serbu digging there against Harvey. It's Yuha who comes away with it. He's got room to skate. Yuha, he's got Defer heading to the net. Jason Yuha tries to feed it over to him. What a save, Joey Cabral! Oh man, diving from post to post. He got a glove on that one and made a big save just 55 seconds into this game. Puck picked up here by Blake Stenicky as he drops it off for Gallerno. Gallerno checked closely by Yuha. He'll play it around the far side boards, but it's held in at the line by Roland Arndt. Nice play there by Arndt as he continues to battle there against Yuha. Yuha dishes it off to Ouellette, and he'll skate it out of the zone. No icing as it'll be Mark Bentz first back on it for Team Yellow. Bentz with some room to skate. A veteran of blind hockey, Bentz representing the Vancouver Eclipse. But there they give it away, and here comes Sean Heeslip for Team Gold. Heeslip, out front, Gobe with the shot. What a save by Cabral, as Jan Gobe, who had two goals yesterday, just got stonewalled by Joey Cabral. So Cabral picking up where he left off yesterday. Solid first game performance, and uh, all over the crease here so far today. Got to ask you about... The fact that uh, Yuha's wearing 99. Mm -hmm. I heard Josh Hosang, yep. when he uh, got with the, the Islanders, was wearing 66, and it was his big outcry. Yep. Who, how dare he wear 66? That's Mario Lemieux's number. <laughs> Should anyone ever wear 99 in <sighs> any hockey team ever? 
again? Uh, that's that's a great question. Personally, Dave Bastel's shaking his head. No. Yeah, and I would tend to, to agree. It it should be retired across all levels of hockey. That said, Yuha is representing the number very well. He has played incredibly well. But yes, I would agree with Dave Bastel that should be retired across all e levels. Even if of it's hockey. not retired, I I just think it's kind of presumptuous. An unwritten rule. You yeah. don't touch that yeah, one. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean. But then again, you know what's going to happen is you're going to get the, the, the older hockey fan who's going to say, well, you're going to do that with number four? Yes. Because he was <laughs> the greatest player ever. Yeah, yeah. no. And that's like, oh, boy, yeah. here we go. Can of worms, <laughs> been open. Well, no question, Yuha will wear 99 all game long. and In honor of Wilf Pema. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> As Team Yellow bring it into the zone, Kiefer Jones has it behind the net. Centers out front, shot, and that just goes wide as Kelly Serbu let that one fly. Wolf Pema, the greatest, the second greatest number 99 in the history of hockey. <laughs> Kelly Serbu digging oh, oh, away wait, for wait, it. I'm getting... Net comes off the pegs here, so I'll have a whistle with 11.20 left in the period. Rick Dudley, really? <laughs> Uh, no kidding, Rick Dudley wore 99. Buffalo? I didn't know that. Huh. Not in Buffalo, though. Yeah? Oh, OK. Well. All right, Wilf <laughs> Pema, the third greatest player to ever wear number 99. <laughs> and you know what? If you see Wilf Pema play, you may say, Jason Yuha, the third greatest player to ever wear 99. <laughs> Wilf Pema, the fourth. <laughs> not not sure, you know, depends on your opinion. <laughs> I don't even know how to pick up off that. That was that was fantastic. As Vince Ryan, good to see him on the ice after taking a big hit yesterday mm -hmm. and having to leave that game with injury. He's out there for Team Yellow, but he's got a back check here because here goes Alex Angus McKechn just offside. Yuha didn't like that call, and that was close. I don't... I don't blame him for disagreeing with that one. I think the ref's actually wearing a GoPro camera on a oh, harness yeah, you're on right. the chest. So let's go to video replay is what I say. <laughs> Coach's no, we've, challenge? We've seen enough of those, my goodness. <laughs> what, the skate blade was sort of on the blue line? <laughs> it was goaltender interference. No, it wasn't. You're right, it wasn't. <laughs> Team Gold dumped the puck in here, and it'll be Hugh LeCavalier getting to it first for Team Yellow. Tries to clear the zone, held in by Yuha. As Jan Gobe there as well. Gobe feathers it towards the net. That's knocked down by Bentz and cleared out as it's scooped up by Sinine. As tries to feed it towards the net. Serbu can't come out of that pack with it. It's Yuha who's got the puck. Gets around one. And they get it out to center ice where It'll be picked up by Hugh LeCavalier. Well, one of the great aspects. Oh, what a save there by Joey Cabral is letting that shot fly. Wyatt Harvey with a quality chance, but a huge right pad save from Joey Cabral keeps this a scoreless tie. Well, one of the great aspects about this weekend is we've got all sorts of special guests popping into the booth throughout the weekend and we're about to be joined momentarily by Team Black All-Star Anthony Siula as Martin DeFore lets that shot fly, goes wide to the post. And digging away for it there is Blake Stenicky. Stenicky comes out of the scrum with the puck but can't clear the zone. Now they get it out to center. Well, let's welcome him into the broadcast. He's just off a big 2-1 win where he got the short-handed game winner with seconds left in the third period. Still and grinning, by the way. Yes. Still <laughs> smiling ear to ear. <laughs> As he should be. <laughs> Anthony Siula, thank you for joining us up here in the booth. How thank are you feeling? Thank you for having me, guys. Uh, I'm feeling awesome. It's been a great experience once again this year. Well, you've been a uh, standout player over the past couple of tournaments, and you've continued on with it here today. I'm curious. Where are you and Mark DeMontis at? Because you seem like you're starting to get that chemistry here. Later in the game, it really started to come together. Uh, I think this afternoon will be really exciting to watch. Now, you're a really fast skater. Is DeMontis able to keep up with you most of the time? I think he's the better player. <laughs> he played junior, I didn't. <laughs> no, he's a really, really good skater, all-around player, so it's exciting. Brings great pace to our line. As, uh, have, you found, have you found that, that on day two, um, it's a little bit more emotional, a bit, a little bit chippier at times, 
because we've sort of gotten the 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 feeling out process taken care of on day one? I think there's a sense of urgency on day two. Yeah. There's two games and you, you see where the point stands are at and uh, you know who to watch and you know what you have to do to win or to yeah. get to Sunday. So, I th yeah, I think it's chippy and I like it. It brings a, a level of competition. It's good. You scored the game winner there, shorthanded with about 30 seconds left in your game. Take us a little bit through that play because you guys, again, were shorthanded. You were pinning your own zone, and then all of a sudden you've got the puck up the ice on a shorthanded two-on-one. Well, um, my dad's always been on me for not being a great enough defensive player, so I tried to, uh, to skate backwards and slow it down, take the puck in our own zone and kill some time. And yeah. we got a goal, sorry Anthony, but oh, we got a goal nice. there for Team Yellow as Kelly Serbu backhands it up and over Mario Ross to give Team Yellow a 1-0 lead. Really nice play right there. Yo, some of the all-stars here throughout the weekend, yourself included, what do you make of players like Kelly Serbu who just come here every year and continue to get it done? I love the challenge. You know, he's gotten bigger this year, so harder to play against, strong on the puck. Um, it brings out the best in me for sure, and I'm sure everyone else too. So I look forward to it. Now I want to ask you because you and Mark DeMontis definitely have some good chemistry going here. You guys connected on that game winner. What age did you and Mark meet? I must have been 14 or 15. Okay. They had started the Courage Canada program and had brought it out west, mm -hmm. and they brought their program into Surrey. Uh, over the years, Mark and uh, Matt and Luca allowed me to take on a little bit of a volunteer role as where I was able to mentor some of the younger kids as someone who had played minor hockey, and I was privileged to be given that opportunity. Mm. Um, started playing with the Eclipse around the age of 17, and again, Mark would be out there, and, um, and then we reconnected last year at the national tournament, mm -hmm. which was amazing, so it's been really good. You know, one of the big... Uh, aspects of this weekend and one of the special aspects as Team Gold bring the puck into the zone here. Jason Yuha tries to center it out front, takes it all the way behind the goal and Team Yellow will clear it out of the zone. Anthony, I'm curious, what are your thoughts on the first ever Canadian national blind hockey team being set to be announced as Yuha brings it in oh, and scores beauty. a beauty goal. What a shot. Jason Yuha. What a shot. Ties this one up at one. Now he's something special, wouldn't you agree, gentlemen? Oh, great stick control, great skater. Played against gets, him in Edmonton, and I was not ready for that. Yeah, gets in <laughs> tight here on this play and uh, manages to put it top left corner on Cabral. Cabral never had a chance. No. Never had an opportunity to pick up the puck, couldn't track it, and Yuha uh, goes top shelf. So, Anthony, I apologize for being interrupted by that beautiful goal by Jason Yuha. But what I want to ask you was the first ever Canadian national blind hockey team is set to be announced Sunday afternoon, tomorrow afternoon. Yes. What are your thoughts on that and, and just the growth of the sport to get to this point? And are you hoping you make that team? Of course. I'd, <laughs> it would be an honor to be a part of that and to represent my country. And uh, I'd be privileged to be able to have the opportunity, and I hope I do. Um, with that being said, I think the growth is amazing. You know, now moving to Canada, the U.S., and we've talked about it, our, our meeting that we had yesterday about guys from Great Britain and Finland and Russia wanting to bring the game over to their countries and <clears throat> share it with their Paralympic athletes. I think it's awesome if we can, uh, if we can get this over there and, you know, really make this a more international game. The Parasport's really growing, and it's an amazing thing. You know, it's interesting. The tournament's been happening here in uh, in Toronto. Um, would you, as a, a guy who's playing out in Vancouver, would you like to see this national tournament move around a little bit? Or is it important to keep it in one place? I think the, the culture and uh, what they've set up here is amazing with uh, the, de the varying degrees of vision. I think they have a great location. You have an awesome facility that Ryerson has provided. Uh, you've got a lot of guys who are in the community as you and Nico are and involved in the game that are out here. I think it's a great setup. I'd like to see the Western and Eastern tournaments continue to be something that moves to different communities, um, whether it be Vancouver or they go up to Calgary or uh, if Laval or if they were to go over to Nova Scotia. Uh, 
But I, I like the idea of having this national tournament here. And I like the idea that the Canadian players are starting to move down to the U.S. and join in on their disabled festivities. Right. You know, one of the, I guess, omissions from the tournament this year is there's just aren't as many American participants up here this year. And that's understandable with the USA uh, yeah. uh, big festival going next weekend in Chicago. Do you guys feel like you're missing any competition compared to years past? or I think the competition is a lot better than last year still. Mm. And I'm not sure whether that has to do with the Americans or not. But if you notice, there's a lot of lower scoring games this year. Yes. Great, mm. de great defense, great goaltending. Yep. People coming into their own uh, youth division. Um, so I can, I can understand why they weren't able to make it just with Pittsburgh and Chicago coming up. Yep. I think it's good. It'll create, give each team an opportunity to see their players and focus on them and hopefully create some animosity and a good rivalry mm. down in October. Absolutely. Let's talk strategy. Uh, okay. You know, I, I'm curious as to the coaching of these games. Sure. And, 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 you know, as they bring these players together, I mean, it's like putting an all-star game together. You don't have a lot of time to mesh. From a coaching standpoint, what are they saying to you guys to, to get you all on the same page? And what kind of sort of game system, if you will, are they preaching? It's a lot of structure. So you have varying degrees of vision. So be sure to communicate uh, hard work. Penalty kill, we, I was telling my guys, make sure you stay in your box. Do not chase the puck. Right. You know, take away that passing lane. Um, so a lot of it is that. If you stay structured, you're able to, to build some chemistry of guys and get to know what they're going to do and how they play that structure. So <clears throat> in a short time span, it's little things, hard work, mm -hmm. pucks on net, nothing too pretty, just... Um, Get your shots. Get your chances. <laughs> I'm hearing, I'm hearing Mike Babcock in my head right now saying, <laughs> you know, don't don't get too cute. You know, just uh, work hard. And, uh, I don't think you know, Babcock would have said this much. <laughs> <laughs> but he would have said, don't be cute. He would have put the puck on the net. Don't be cute. Or just you'll be sit, or you'll be sitting. Yeah, just work hard. <laughs> well, he'd be impressed with your game, Anthony. There's no question about oh. that. You know, I noticed you're wearing a University of British Columbia sweatshirt <laughs> away from the rink. What are you up to? What are you doing these days? Uh, actually, my brother's a golfer at UBC. Okay. He's playing down at Chambers Bay this weekend. So oh, uh, nice. I wear this to support him wherever I go. Um, I manage at a Boston pizza, and I, I'm in a business program at a small local university in BC. Oh, that's so awesome. Things are good. Very good. Lots coming up. Absolutely, and lots of good hockey coming up. We can't wait to see you back on the ice. Where's the restaurant? The restaurant? The Boston Pizza? Yeah, the one you're at. Uh, it's actually right in Langley, BC, uh, where they hold held their westerns last a year and a half ago, okay. or two years ago. So awesome. when we're in Langley, we know where we're going. That's right. We've got the hookup. When right you guys on. come out that way, we can we can visit. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Can't wait. Sounds good. Thanks a lot for having me, gentlemen. Thank you, Thank Anthony. Thank you so much for joining us. That's Anthony Siula, a tremendous player here at the 2018 Canadian National Blind Hockey Tournament. And he had the shorthanded game winner for Team Black as they pick up a 2-1 victory and remain undefeated here at the National Tournament. I do have to say, mm. probably one of the best celebrations we've seen so far at this yes, tournament too. Yes, absolutely. With the big leaping crash into the glass. Yes, thank you for mentioning that. Great point, He must Mike. be. He must have good shoulder pads because he <laughs> went in hard. Yes, you could hear the smack <laughs> up here, but a big moment and there this for is, Anthony. I know, I know there are stanchions here, but the glass does not look that forgiving, so <laughs> good on him. <laughs> he says some of the players out there hit harder than the glass. All right, fair point. Well, first period is in the books here in this game between Team Gold and Team Yellow. And after the opening 15 minutes, we're all squared up at one goal apiece. Great game so far here. Goal scorers in this one, Kelly Serbu for Team Yellow and for Team Gold, Jason Yuha. It's been a tight game here. Again, as Anthony mentioned, a lot of focus on defense and Absolutely. structure. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're talking about these one goal or, 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 or tighter than that. I mean, these tie games that we've uh, now encounter another one here. One, one after one. And that's despite a couple of nice goals. I mean, they're beauty goals. Yep. But those opportunities are few and far between because these teams are playing so well on defense. And some good goaltending from both of these tenders as well as Joey yeah. Cabral made a number of great saves there. Mario Ross not as busy, but still had to make some clutch saves there. As the teams get set for the second period, coaching staffs talk a little strategy. I like that insight there from Anthony as far as 
how the coaches are dealing, at least with Team Black. And you have to assume that everybody's probably preaching from the same choir book here, that, that they're going to be talking about structure. They're going to be talking about just playing the, the fundamentals properly. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about being cute. Don't worry about being fancy. Just make good, clean passes. Use your speed as best you can. Get into a good passing lane to open up those opportunities. You have to think that that's what everybody's going to be basically preaching to their players. Well, the coaches send the players back out, and we're just moments away from second period puck drop as you're tuned in to the 2018 Canadian National Blind Hockey Tournament presented by CNIB and AMI. Let's take a quick moment to thank our various sponsors, including Ryerson University, Mattamy Athletic Centre, CCM, Electra Health Floor, Mackenzie Investments, Letco Brousseau, the Holiday Inn and GTHL Canada. And of course, a big thank you to CNIB and AMI. And hey, CNIB is celebrating their 100th anniversary and you can come down and be a part of it at 2 p.m. with the CNIB 100th anniversary free skate. Second period underway as Team Yellow Try to break out of their zone. Dufour with a shot from the half wall, and that went off the post. The wraparound chance snuffed out as Cabral gets a pat on it. They continue to dig away for it, and now Team Yellow will skate it out with Kiefer Jones. Or check that. That's Blake Stenicky for Team Yellow. Stenicky tries to center that one in front. Good pass as Brian Cowie got a stick on it, but he was defended closely by Hugh Leduc, and that was the end of that chance for Mackey. Team Gold try to play it off the boards and out. Held in at the line momentarily by Megan Mahu, or excuse me, Megan Mahan. And Team Gold bring it in. Dufour with the shot and he scores! Puts it over top the sprawling Cabral. And Team Gold take a 2-1 lead as Martin Dufour gets them ahead. Well, Team Gold. The 2-1 lead here. Almost mirroring what happened yesterday in their first game, that they won 4-2 against Team Red, where it was uh, fairly tight, and then they started to pull away. And we'll see if uh, they managed to continue feeding off the momentum of that goal and uh, just how, uh, how deflating that can or can't be for Team Yellow. Well, Team Yellow have possession here as Kelly Serbu He's checked closely by a couple of team gold players. Alex Angus McKechn involved in that defensive battle. And now team gold take possession again as McKechn has it in front of the team yellow bench. Makes the pass. Yuha takes it, shoots. Oh, what a beauty! Jason Yuha goes top shelf and it's 3-1 team gold. So two goals barely moments apart here and a 3-1 lead and you got to think if you're Cabral it's taking a little bit of air out of your tires yeah a tough tough period here for Joey Cabral really hasn't gotten the defensive support that you might have expected but now they're going to try and answer back with a little offense as Gallerno brings it in centers in front that one goes off the post as Jamie Fodak let the shot fly Gallerno has it. He's checked closely there. As Wyatt Harvey all over him. Yuha in there as well for Team Gold. They clear the puck to the line, but not out as Fodak holds it in. Tries to feed it over to Bentz, but that's broken up. And it's scooped up now by Gallerno. Gallerno makes the pass to Fodak. He gets it over to Serbu. Serbu shoots and scores, and it's a 3 2 game. Now, is Serbo using a DeMontis stick in this game? And if so, I does DeMontis get so. some credit? <laughs> just, just wondering. What a goal. And you know what? I mean, we're just talking about whether or not this was going to be a situation where Team Yellow maybe be a little bit deflated giving up those two quick goals, but they respond beautifully. Well, and we got a one-goal game. And it's a... Great game here with 11.05 remaining in the period. 
as Team Gold, well, they just gave one up. They still have a 3-2 lead, and they're going to try regain that two-goal lead. But right now it's Megan Mahan for Team Yellow, bringing it into the zone. Mahan drops it for Stenicky. He lets the shot fly. Ross gets the paddle down and covers it up with 10.40 remaining here in the period. Team Gold, second goal. Well, you know it's fast action when the PA announcer is two goals behind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how quick those goals were scored. <laughs> well, it, I'll tell you, in uh, something I've observed at this tournament, mm. those the goals are not announced over play. Right, yes. Um, and, and it's to avoid, I guess, the distraction and it, to not have any noise so that the players can hear those buzzers. Yep that indicate that the clean pass has been made and they can make a shot. So a little bit uh, a little bit different for uh, our PA announcer here yep. at the Madame Athletic Center than uh, than what you would uh, normally get as uh, he's with the uh, with North Bay, North Bay, Bay right? Brian Floyd doing a great That's job. It. It's his uh, I think it's his third year here at the tournament and I've been lucky enough to know Brian for a number of years and he does a great job both on the local radio station in North Bay, and of course, is the PA announcer for the battalion. Excuse me, for the battalion. Yuha gets the pass back, takes oh, the backhander, stop. and what a great pad save from Joey Cabral. Yuha still has the puck on his stick. That time, his drop pass gets picked off by Kiefer Jones, and Jones can't gain the zone. So here come Team Gold right back. Pass by He Slip over to. Oh, what a save there by Cabral as he stopped Yuha in tight. Yuha got it up high, but a great save by Cabral. Kiefer Jones gets around the defender, but right now Jones is the lone player in there for Team Yellow. He's got to get a passing option. There's Serbu, lets the shot fly, and Ross got a big piece of that one before it goes over top the net. 8.45 remaining in the period. A one goal game here. Team Gold with a 3-2 lead as they have the puck. Smack it up and it's Martin Dufour who gets it for Team Gold. Dufour makes the pass. Out of the corner, Dufour lets the shot fly as after he received the pass there from Fornas, or excuse me, Sean Dale. And here comes Gallerno for Team Gold. Gallerno. He's checked closely, he's got Serbu with him, makes the pass. Team uh, Gold can't clear the zone on the first attempt. Dufour picks it up and he'll skate it out across center ice. Dufour drops that one off. As Wyatt Harvey steps in, takes the shot and it goes wide to the far post, but it'll be scooped up there by Gilles Roulette. Roulette plays it around to the near corner. As Wyatt Harvey battles for that loose puck, it's going to be picked up here by Kiefer Jones, who feeds it ahead to Vince Ryan. Ryan, he's got room to skate, makes the pass to Gallerno. Great pass, good shot, better save, as Ross just got the left pad out to make that stop. Oh, oh and then oh, Vince Ryan. Here. Yeah, he got right in the face of Wyatt Harvey there. And there's still some animosity between the two. Well, Gallardo came in and took the extra poke after the whistle. And uh, that's what Wyatt Harvey took exception to. It looks like we're going to have offsetting minor penalties here as Vince Ryan and Wyatt Harvey will take a seat in the box. So we're getting on sportsman like calls on both. So they'll go, uh, they'll go five on five. So both Harvey and Ryan off for two minutes. And there's that chippiness on day two we've been talking about. <laughs> it's amazing. Rivals on the ice, best of friends off the ice. And you can almost guarantee that Wyatt Harvey and Vince Ryan will be sharing a laugh tonight after this one. But yeah, right now they're going hard head to head. And here comes Gallerno for... Team Yellow, Gallerno brings it all the way in. He's got to make a pass, checks his options. He had Stenicky with him, but Gallerno tries to shield it there from a couple of Team Gold defenders held in at the line momentarily as Gobe can't clear it out for Team Gold. 
Jamie Fodak tries to play it behind the net around the far side boards, and it just gets past the stick of Hugh Le Cavalier. And now Yuha will pick it up here for Team Gold. Yuha centers in front, and they score! What a beauty! Jan Gobe gets his third of the weekend, and it's 4-2 for Team Gold. Go Bay from Yuha, and those two continue to form great chemistry here for Team Gold. So Team Gold just building here on a lead. And they've shown over their two games, or their game and a half to this point, that they may be, along with Team Black, who's had uh, pretty good results uh, they may be the two teams that end up going to a final here. Would not surprise me. Yeah, it, and a Team Yellow struggles uh, in this one after that disappointing 3-2 overtime loss yesterday. And we should mention that was the first loss at the tournament for Kelly Serbu. He's never lost before as Yuha brings it right in. Great save there by Cabral. Paddle down makes that stop. And that's an important save with under five minutes remaining in the second period. Yuha just continues to cause issues here for Team Yellow as he takes the puck from one end all the way up to the other. And he's got great chemistry with both Jan Gobe and Martin Dufour. As Jason Yuha, the Rosalind Alberta native, continues to impress here at the Canadian Nationals. Yuha feathers that one in front. It's knocked down and cleared out by Team Yellow as Pascal Sinise takes that shot. Diving defender gets in the way of it. It's on the near boards as nice stick handling here by Sinise and takes it in tight and Ross gets that one covered up with 4-10 remaining in the period. Well, we want to remind you folks that you can connect with us through social media. Tweet us at Bro Behind the Mic, at AMI Rossi, at CDN Blind Hockey, and of course at AMI Audio. We'll get to a few shout outs throughout the day. Let us know who you're cheering on and where you're watching from so we can give you a good shout out. Off the face off, Team Yellow have it as. Stenicky brings it behind the net, plays it over to the far corner for Kiefer Jones. Back to the point. Le Cavalier, he has his shot blocked. And here comes Team Gold, led by Sean Heeslip. Heeslip centers that one in front, broken up nicely as getting a stick there was Sensen. And here comes Team Red, or excuse me, Team Yellow wearing those red jerseys. Centered in front, off the side of the goal as Yuha there defensively with 3.05 remaining in the period. Shot off the half wall by Megan Mahan goes wide. Behind the net, Jones battles for it, but it's on the stick of Yuha, and he'll send that one down the length of the ice. Won't have enough for icing, so Mahan will have to retrieve this one here. Megan Mahan under pressure, dumps it around the far boards, held in at the line by Yuha. Battling for possession, backhander goes wide to the post and it's corralled by Mahan. Jones feathers that one up to Gallerno. No clean pass yet, now he dumps it off for Stenicky, just out of his reach, so Team Gold gained possession with 2.20 remaining here in the period. Jones, good back check, breaks up that centering pass. Gallerno battles for it at center ice, but it's scooped up by Team Gold as they play it forward. Nice work there by Jan Gobe. Blake Stenicky comes up with it for Team Gold, brings it through the neutral zone. Nice move to get across the line, but they call him just offside with that extra move and a minute 50 remaining in the second period. So Gobe gets the goal assisted from Yuha. Those two connected on a few goals in their opening game. 
as Gobey had a pair in that 4-2 win. Team Gold chipped the puck up. A minute 20 remaining here in the period. Nice hustle there by Alex Angus McKechn. Centers in front and just out of the reach of Wyatt Harvey. And we've got a whistle here as the net comes off its pegs with 108 remaining in the period. Yeah, Mark Benz back checking uh, on that play. And it uh, caught a rut and uh, went into the uh, right post. Thankfully, Joey Cabral not in the vicinity, just over to the, his own right. So Benz doesn't make contact uh, with the goaltender, but just uh, just the post and dislodge the net. Serbu wins the defensive zone draw, but Yuha takes the puck away from him. And now Team Gold, after making that clean pass, can potentially get a shooting chance, but that's broken up thanks to some good work by Kelly Serbu. Serbu, he gets stripped of the puck as Alex Angus McKechn tries to get around one, and nice work there by Pascal Sensan to take the puck away from Alex Angus McKechn. Sensan tries to feather that in front. That's broken up. And McKechn ends up getting it out to center ice. Yuha picks it up across the blue line, makes the pass, shot from distance, just goes wide. Yuha picks it up behind the net as Cabral tries to get his positioning. Sitting there at the blue ice, off the post, and they'll whistle it down with the net coming off. A great couple of saves there from Joey Cabral. And with 9.2 seconds left in the period, it still remains 4-2 for Team Gold. Cabral may want to thank the uh, crossbar behind him for that one too. It rolled up his stick and it went off that crossbar staying out. So a little bit of puck luck there for Team Yellow. Nine seconds left in the second period, but still down four to two. Off the draw, Team Yellow win it. And that'll pretty much do it for the second period. They're gonna go into the break trailing by two as the buzzer sounds, but with a third period still to come, this could be anybody's game as Team Yellow continue to work for their first win of the tournament. Team Gold try to stay undefeated here on day number two. Well, no question about it. Joey Cabral has been the busier of the two goaltenders and the veteran Mario Ross, I got to think he's liking these light workloads so far. Yeah, no kidding. I, I mean, let's face it. Yesterday, though it was a 4-2 win, he was tested more than he's been tested here today. And I'm thinking Team Yellow, they look like a team that uh, losing a little bit of steam here, a little bit of momentum with the perspective now potentially going down. They're 15 minutes away here from going down 0-2 in the tournament. And they would be uh, then tied with Team Red with a winless record. So they're going to be pushing here very hard in this uh, third period. It's going to be interesting to see if they almost abandon the defensive uh, game and simply start looking for offense trailing by two goals here heading into the third period. Well, Team Yellow picking up a single point in their OT loss yesterday, but you know they're gonna want more than just a single point after two games. They're gonna have to dig deep here and find a way to crack the defense of Team Gold who have really had them pinned in their own zone for stretches here. It's been a tough game for Team You know Yellow. what? They may have picked up that single point, mm. but they'll still look at that as a loss. Oh yeah, absolutely. And especially given the manner in which it happened, right? Yep. To lose that in overtime, um, that one stings a little bit more. And I, you know, in, in talking to some of the, uh, the players after the game, that's what you heard in their voice was was even a little bit more disappointing in losing it the way they did. So they may have the one point, but they're still feeling like it's a, it, it was a loss, and, and right now they're less than 15 minutes away from losing another. Well, and they're going to have to dig deep to change this outcome as Dufour lets that shot fly, screeches over top the net. Team, uh, team Gold continue to press here offensively leading this game four to two. 
Kept in at the line by Paul Schmold. Good play to keep the zone alive as Dufour can't get to that loose puck. Sean Dale digs it off the half wall, centers it, and battling for it there is Jules Ouellette. Picked up here by Team Yellow as Stenicky tries to feed it over to Vince Ryan. That's broken up. Mahan kicks it down in front of the penalty box and she'll corral it, making the pass over to Vince Ryan. Ryan tried to get it back to Stenicky. That's broken up. And to four there for Team Gold. Dumps it into the zone. Gallerno. Under pressure from his Ibu teammate, Dufour. Oh, what a save by Cabral! Kicks out the right leg and makes a huge pad save to keep his team down by just two. Picking that one up very late in the process. That puck basically stopped on the line as Cabral actually slid back into his net. So lucky that that puck did not cross the line completely. He manages to uh, keep this a 4-2 game. Serbu wins the draw and chips it forward. Brian Cowie gives chase, and it's going to be Team Gold smacking it out to center ice where Yuha makes the pass over to Heeslip. Heeslip dumps it in. Skating after it is the youngest player in the open division. That's number 87, Joe Fornasser for Team Gold. Goal. That was good, by the way, the Passover on Easter weekend. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I didn't even mean to do that. Thank you. And a happy Easter and a happy Passover to everyone who's tuned in here as you're watching the 2018 Canadian National Blind Hockey Tournament presented by CNIB and AMI. Under pressure, Kiefer Jones spins away from a couple of checkers and they get the puck out down the length of the ice. And this will be an icing call here against Team Yellow with 12.25 remaining in the third. You got to think as that clock continues to tick down, one more goal for uh, Team Gold and this thing's over. I just haven't seen enough from Team Yellow. Just not enough driving to the net, not enough offensive opportunities. And you got to think, I mean, there's 12 minutes left. When do you just pull out, you know, let the horses go? Mm. You know, abandon the defensive game and just put it all on offense. Everybody goes. And uh, and you let Cabral know, listen, <laughs> you're on your own yeah. because we need two goals. Well, and they may need more as Yuha centers it right in front. Great defensive play to sweep it away. Mark Bentz there providing some good defense for Team Yellow. Yuha. In the near corner. Oh, steps out, takes oh. the shot and rips it off the post. What individual skill. Incredible display from Jason Yuha. Yuha continues to battle for it. Makes the pass. Fornasser gets around one. Tries to stick handle his way to the net, but Mahan sniffs that out. Yuha, toe drag, can't get the shot away cleanly. It's st uh, sitting there at the far side. Face off dot, Yuha drags it through the skates of Le Cavalier. Out front to Fornasser, his shot gets blocked. And Team Yellow desperately trying to clear the pressure here. They can't get it away from Jason Yuha. Yuha with the puck on a string, stick handling around defenders, cuts in all the way behind the goal. Tried to get it over to Heeslip, now centers it out front. That shot blocked by a defender. Mahan got a uh, skate on that. And then Cabral, good job to keep the pad against the post to make that save. Hard for Team Yellow to get any offense going when Jason Yuha is holding the puck for like five minutes. <laughs> I mean, he's everywhere in the zone. And as you mentioned, it looked like he had that thing duct taped to his stick. Nobody able to take it away from him. It's just like toying with the defense. And they managed to keep that puck in there and they knock another two minutes off the clock. Well, Team Yellow, it's gut check time. They trail by two, 10 minutes remaining here, and they're pinned in their own zone as Alex Angus McKechn tries to feed that one over to Jan Gobe. McKechn digging away for it there against Mark Bentz in the near corner. Gobe in there for Team Gold as well. Sean Dale. All three Team Gold players digging away for the puck, and now it's Gallerno who has it for Team Yellow. He flips it off the glass, but that won't clear the zone. 
Vince Ryan tries to run over a couple of players to get the puck out, but that still stays within the zone. Nice back check by Serbu. He got a stick lift there on Gobe, and now Serbu has the puck on his stick. Kelly Serbu, he's got Vince Ryan skating with him, so some potential offense here for Team Yellow. Oh, beautiful defending there as Serbu got stripped of the puck. Great heads up play by number 89, Wyatt Harvey, to sniff that rush out. So Serbu looks really frustrated. Really hasn't been a factor in this game the way he had in uh, game one. Yuha brings it across the blue line here for Team Gold. Tries to drop it for Dufour. That one's picked off, and here comes Gallerno for Team Yellow. He needs some support as Gallerno has Brian Cowie trailing him. Tried to get the draw pass, but that's picked off by Yuha. And here goes Jason Yuha. Great defensive play there by Megan Mahan. She broke up that two on one. As the teams exchange puck possession here with 8.30 remaining in the third. Dufour lets the shot fly and with the net off the pegs. Well, the referees haven't seen it yet, so play continues on here. But the net is way off the line. And that shot goes well wide. Play still continues on here. As uh, Gilles Ouellette digs it out of the corner. Dufour takes the shot and now they finally <laughs> notice. Good job by you, Mike, trying to get their attention wow. there. I can't believe they let that go on for so long. Things almost a foot behind the goal line. Never mind clean passes. How about a net? Right. We need a net, sir. <laughs> Please. Could you imagine the controversy there if one went in? The net's about How a foot behind the line. How are they determining the clean line? passes if they can't see the net is a foot behind the goal line? Come on. I, I start heckling these officials. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Oh, they're not booing. They're saying boo earns. <laughs> boo! We do want to thank the GTHL for providing the officials as they do every yes, year. Yes, of course. I, I, we say I this kid. very tongue-in-cheek, yes. I kid because I love. <laughs> Peter Curtis, one of the referees, a good buddy of mine. Great to see him back here again this year. And not an easy job being a referee, but they're doing the best they can. Well, <laughs> when you're not calling anything and the, you know, the net's a foot behind the line, it seems like a very easy thing to do. <laughs> I think I could do that. They, they dig away for the puck in the near I, corner. I could go for a twirl oh. on the ice here too, you know. <laughs> You're killing me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Team Gold Hammer right back into the zone with under seven minutes remaining here in the third period. Here's the worst thing is the other officials wearing a body camera. Yeah. I want to know, I want to review the footage and see what he was looking at that whole time. Well, and that's what got me. He was the one who was down in that zone. How did he not notice that? I don't know. I don't know. Sensan brings it up here for Team Yellow, makes the pass as he fed it over to Fodak, who tried to get it back to Sensan, but that's broken up and ice down by Team Gold. It's not going to have enough for icing, so Mahan has to retrieve it here with 6.20 remaining in the third period and her team trailing by two. Yuha takes the puck away from Mahan. Yuha makes the pass to Gobe and his shot goes just wide of the top corner on the far side. Great chance there as 88 and 99 continue to connect here for Team Gold. Yuha centers that one for Heaslip. Rolling puck, great save by Cabral as he's down in the Snow Angel to make that stop. And again, a, a bit of a quick whistle there. Team Gold, that puck was not immobilized, was not covered. And uh, Team Gold missing out on uh, maybe another late scoring opportunity to put this thing away for good. Five and a half minutes left in this game and it's a 4-2 Team Gold lead. We got a few shout outs and this will be rapid fire style. So let's give a shout out to Susan Stewart, to Brett Wills, and we'll get one more in here as we'll give a shout out to NBA World. Hey, if the NBA wants to watch, we're all for that. As Yuha lets the shot fly, it goes just wide to the far post. Alex Angus McKechn first on it here for Team Gold. Alex Angus McKechn does well to get around that. Check from Gallerno, takes it right in shot and it just goes wide to the near post. McKechn, oh, what a beauty! He followed up his own rebound and then roofed it on the wraparound. It's 5-2 for Team Gold. Wow, what a pretty goal from Alex Angus McKechn. And I'll tell you, Mike, it's been a real pleasure to watch his growth over the past few seasons. 
from a youth program participant to one of the top players here in the Open Division, Alex Angus McCacken has done the program proud. And you got to think that that's uh, putting this one on ice for Team Gold, a 5-2 lead. Just over four minutes left to go here. Well, Team Yellow, you're playing for a little bit of pride here. As Serbu brings it in and Ryan there taps it home. So maybe they've still got a little bit of life left. Are we got Now, are they just they say, waving that off? I'm not sure. Yeah, it was not a clear signal from the official. I think this is going to count. Yeah, it's yep. going to count. Vince Ryan gets the goal. Kelly Serbu with the assist. And Team Yellow are within two goals and 350 remaining here in the third. So maybe it's not over. <laughs> Let's face it, I mean, we've seen instances in, the, in this tournament before. 343 is a lot of time. And Serbu brings it right back in for Team Yellow. Tries to feed it over to Vince Ryan. That's broken up. Roland Art makes a good play to keep the puck in the zone. As Serbu battling there against Yuha. Yuha, or check that, that was uh, Wyatt Harvey who did a good job to clear the puck out of the zone for Team Gold. Ryan goes for the line change. Team Gold try to keep it in the zone. Wyatt Harvey digs it out there as Dufour chases after the loose puck. Shot from Harvey, knocked down by the defenseman, Roland Arndt, and he'll bring it out, makes the pass over to Gallerno. Gallerno can't get around his man at center. Dufour cleared the zone, and now he'll get that loose puck. Dufour tries to feed the pass back. It's picked off. And here comes Sensan for Team Yellow. Can't get it in deep as Dufour brings it back out. He's got Yuha with him. Makes the pass to Yuha. Yuha in. Yes, oh, sir. what a beauty. Wow. And that's the hat trick goal for Jason Yuha. No chance for Cabral on that one. That puck wasn't on Yuha's stick more than a half second before he whipped it upstairs. Wicked, Team wicked goal. wrist shot. Top left corner, Cabral had no chance on that. And we've got a 6-3 lead now for Team Gold. That's the first three goal lead that we've seen, I believe, in this tournament. Yeah, in the open division, you're absolutely right. As Jason Yuha starting to take this game over and take over the weekend, he's got a hat trick here in this one. And he's got at least one assist as well as he's got his team in control. Team Gold leading this game 6-3 to three over Team Yellow with two minutes and three seconds remaining in the third period. So we got a timeout called here by Team Yellow with just over two minutes left here in the third. And at this point, I mean, I don't know what kind of message you're, you're sending your team other than Take a look at the scoreboard, guys. Mm. And, and I really do question the, uh, the decision to not throw more offense, right? Not yeah. just abandon the defensive game. It's not helping you. Yeah, and... And, and, and you've got, in, in, in Serbu, you got one of the better players in this tournament. And there's oh. been a couple of plays where I've really noticed uh, Kelly. Otherwise, it's it has not been uh, Kelly's uh, best performance. I mean, you, you check out this Team Yellow roster. You see names like Kiefer Jones, Kelly Serbu, yep. Blake Stenicky. Those guys have all been rendered essentially non-factors here in mm -hmm. this game because of the tight defensive play from Team Gold. And, you know, I wonder if it's just the coach mindset, Joey Alley, a goaltender, maybe he's just so focused on that defensive aspect that he just wasn't willing to budge and push that offense forward. But, yeah, tough, tough sledding right now for Team Yellow. And they're actually going to pull the goaltender here, Joey Cabral. So with 2.20 remaining in the third period, Team Yellow pull the goalie for the extra attacker. Team Gold goal, scored by number 99. So they'll try for offense now, but is it going to be too little too late as they trail by three with under two and a half minutes remaining? Empty net yeah, for Team Yellow. Off the faceoff, Serbu wins it, and it's Jones who picks it up. Makes the pass over to Ryan. Ryan gains the zone, and he'll flip it behind the net. Serbu hustles after that. He gets to it first for Team Yellow. 2.10 remaining here in the third period as Serbu battles against Alex Angus McKechn. Serbu gets around one defender. Nice work by Wyatt Harvey to come in. 
That shot from the point by Mahan nearly gave Ross some trouble. Centered in front. Oh, what a save by Mario Ross. Two huge saves. And then it trickles over top his pad. And Team Yellow are within two. Vince Ryan gets the goal with a minute 50 remaining in regulation. Well, that was almost a head scratcher. I'm wondering, why are you pulling the goaltender and having your extra attacker sit in the neutral zone, mm. not be even in the offensive zone? It made no sense to me. Lucky for Team Yellow that they managed to basically crash the crease there and uh, and put away what you would call a garbage goal and in, in picking up the, the trash there. And good on them. But I'm, I'm still wondering why you had one of your, your one extra skater playing back defensively when you're looking for goals here. Mm. Well, they're still with the net empty here as Yuha has it in the far corner, but Team Gold have not made a clean pass, and with a minute 30 remaining, they'll whistle it down as three Team Yellow players had Yuha pinned up against the boards. 6-4 the score here in favor of Team Gold. They're trying to remain undefeated, but Team Yellow pushing back, and with a minute 15 left in the third, we'll see if Team Yellow, who are wearing those red jerseys, can equalize here and force some OT. Off the draw, Team Yellow have it now as Gallerno scoops it up. Alex Angus McKechn, Megan Mahan, she can't get it over to Gallerno. Yuha comes in and takes it away. We're inside the final 60 seconds of regulation as Kiefer Jones passes it near side to Megan Mahan. Mahan tries to poke it forward. Yuha picks it off and dumps it into the far corner. Hugh Le Cavalier first on it here for Team Yellow. They feed it near side for Gallerno. Gallerno gets it up to Serbu who brings it across the blue line. Serbu drops it off to Jones. He was checked closely and Team Gold shoot it out to center ice. Maybe one more chance here. Team Yellow trailing by two and with just 15 seconds left, Yuha dumps it in. Dufour will try, keep it pinned up against the boards. Just 10 seconds remaining here as Team Gold will improve to 2-0 on the weekend with a big 6-4 victory here over Team Yellow. You can see the excitement on the ice there. Players like Hugh LeDuc showing some emotion after a big 6-4 win in what's been the highest scoring game so far this weekend. A hat trick for Jason Yuha, part of a four point game as he helps his team improve to 2 0 here at the national tournament. All due respect to Team Yellow, but the score is not indicative of what this game really was. Yep. Uh, this was a, a, a strong game by Gold. It was their game all the way and uh, much uh, closer on the scoreboard than it really was on the ice. Not what I was expecting from a Team Yellow in this game. And as you mentioned, Nico, 6-4 and 10 goals. Mm. And there were just about, I think, what were the 11 goals yesterday yeah. in both open games That's combined? Right, total, yeah. And we get 10 in this game alone. So a little bit more of your sort of traditional score at a tournament like this. Mm. But again, a couple of those goals that uh, Team Yellow scored um, you know, good on them for scoring them, but. Whoa, takes... and we got a. Oh, <laughs> you, they, they had me. They had me with that one. <laughs> Joey and Mario, best of friends. And I swear, I thought that was real for a second, but the two just having a little fun there in the handshake line. A bit of a mock fight there between the two Toronto Ice Owls, <laughs> Joey Cabral and Mario Ross. You got me, boys. You got me. <laughs> Big smiles on the ice from all the participants, even Vince Ryan as his team drops to 0-2, but nothing shakes him in terms of his confidence and his fun. And, well, Team Yellow will have to try rebound this afternoon when they take on Team Red at 4.25 p.m. So the Low uh, Vision and Development Division game is happening next. And then a uh, couple of skates happening, the Children and Youth Division skate and the CNIB 100th anniversary free skate happening. And at uh, 3.10 this afternoon, Eastern Time, Team Black versus Team Gold. 
which will be a, a beauty game as uh, you get the two undefeated teams going head to head. And uh, that'll be followed by Team Yellow versus Team Red at 425 Eastern, 125 Pacific time. And the Low Vision and Development uh, Division Game 2 happening at 540 Eastern time at 2.40 Pacific time. And all of it coming to you here on AMI-audio. And a reminder, if there are any parts of games or intermissions or features that you happen to miss from day one or day two, they are going to be available. And uh, in fact, day one already available in a podcast form. So go to your favorite podcast platform and uh, search out AMI-live, AMI-live, and uh, you can dig up interviews and uh, features and games that happen on day one. Well, once again, the final score in that game, Team Gold victorious with a 6-4 win over Team Yellow as Jason Uha scores the hat trick. And that's going to do it for me because I'm working tonight. Ah. So I'm, I will not be here for the uh, afternoon games. David Bastel is going to be here. You're going to jump in for me? Absolutely, Mike. Right. Excellent. I, I, so, I, yeah, we got the uh, the Leafs and the Jets tonight. Yeah, it should be a fantastic game. Uh, good luck on the call tonight. And, and uh, further to that, next year you and I are going to do some refing in this tournament, oh, I think. I absolutely okay. want to be down there. So. I so want to be down there. <laughs> we we Listen, don't want to lose you guys in the broadcast, but we wouldn't blame you either. Listen, <laughs> I, I, I kid, it isn't, it, it's not, it's never easy. Yeah. It, you know, and I've been an official um, in baseball. I did it for 15 years. And no matter what call you make, somebody's disagreeing with you. It's just the way it goes. So uh, we're having a little bit of fun at the uh, expense 100%. of the guys. 100%. But yeah. we, we totally, we really appreciate what they're bringing here. But uh, hey, we got to laugh too, you know. Absolutely. Well, Mike, thank you so much for Pleasure. We'll be back tomorrow. Yep, can't wait to have you back tomorrow. And as Mike mentioned, coming up next, we've got the Low Vision and Development Division game number one. But before that, we're going to throw it over to Dave Bastel and the AMI crew. Thank you so much, gentlemen.